speakers, I think, really give a nice diversity of talks. And I think it's going to be a really nice meeting. And I hope everyone enjoyed the social last night, as well as going to Port Jefferson and seeing a little bit of Long Island for those that are out of town. So to start things off, I'm going to give a little introduction to Stony Brook University Fisheries Research that's conducted here. And then I'm going to turn it over to Jim in a moment to talk about, uh, give a little introduction to marine fisheries. So we have a pretty big contingent within the School of Marine and Atmospheric Sciences of fisheries research. And we have four labs that, that focus on fisheries. We have the Chen lab showing up, um, on, on the left, the Frisk lab, which is, which is my lab, as well as the Institute for Ocean Conservation Science with Dr. Ellen Pickage, and also Bob, Bob Serrato's lab. And you can see we have quite a few students and, and technicians and postdocs. And we're really excited uh, to have these students presenting at this meeting in the next couple of days, so you'll get an idea of what I think is pretty exciting research that we're conducting here. And our research covers a wide range of topics. We have a lot of research related to climate change, as well as population dynamics of marine and freshwater species, as well as um, ecosystem dynamics and how they're changing over time with climate and other drivers. We also have projects on a wide range of species. This is just a, a few of them here, from, from American lobster to, to white sharks, to halibut to striped bass, and, and so forth. And we are pretty heavily focused on the marine environment, but we have research in um, the Hudson River, in the streams of Long Island with brook trout and other species. And we also have research internationally. We, we're, we do work in China all the way to Lake Turkana and Kenya. So we cover a pretty wide diversity of habitats in our fisheries research. And <clears throat> Jim is going to give an introduction to the Marine Fisheries of New York. And it's really my pleasure uh, to, to introduce Jim to do that. Uh, Jim has been the Director of Marine Fisheries for the past 15 years. Oh my God. <laughs> past 15 years and really have been a partner here with Stony Brook. And uh, I chair the Marine Resource Advisory Council uh, for the state, and Jim has been a um, partner working with that. And the last time Jim and I were here presenting, we had a couple hundred, um, well, uh, fishermen that weren't necessarily happy with some regulations that were coming up. And we're hoping for a more friendly audience uh, today. <laughs> but Jim retired uh, two weeks ago. So we are bringing Jim out of retirement um, to present this. And the, the one thing I want to uh, say before um, Jim takes it over is that one thing that makes us very proud of SOMAS is to see all the graduates of our program that are in the audience working for different organizations and government agencies. And Jim is one of those that's had a very successful career that is a graduate of our program. So it's really my pleasure, pleasure to introduce um, Jim and let him give you an introduction to the marine fisheries in New York. Thanks a lot, Mike. Um, and uh, it, it is true, last time we were in this room, <clears throat> there were torches and pitchforks, and uh, most of the people that were wanting to kill us. So hopefully you're going to be more friendly today. Because we were talking about striped bass, and that's one of the most important species in New York. So just, uh, I was going to go into the theme is to go a little bit about when my history and where we came from management, where are we going. Um, but just an opening slide, this is the Marine Division. This is everything we do on this slide. So if you have any questions, I'll send you this and you can figure out everything we do. <laughs> so just I wanted to contrast a little bit because I know we got both fresh water and marine managers in here. Generally, uh, the science is pretty much the same. It's when you get to... Um, the socioeconomics and the political part of it, it gets very, very different in terms of marine and freshwater. But I've had the opportunity in my career to do both. I've uh, started out doing salmon tracking in the northwest, trout studies in the south, uh, eastern Georgia, and then marine fisheries all the way out 200 miles offshore. So I've kind of seen it all, and they're both challenging, but they both are a little bit different. So first off, my last effort when I was in New York City was doing some fisheries management in terms of uh, uh, freshwater areas. So a little bit different, you got a, a smaller water body, use smaller equipment. Um, I have put this up that people never thought I actually worked as a fisheries scientist, so I actually did do a lot of fisheries. 
Um, the gear's a little bit smaller, um, and we find things like you there bolting. So this was, we found snakeheads in Flushing Meadow Park. We move on to marine. Well, we got a little bit bigger pond. Um, we use a little bit bigger equipment to actually do those surveys. Um, when we do some catching, uh, it's usually a little bit more in the net than when you get maybe at Flushing Meadow. And essentially need a lot more people working the sides up. And the reason we do this, of course, is because the things that we manage uh, have a large distribution and range from the Hudson River all the way up to the Canadian Maritime and all the way down to the Carolinas. So back in the 1940s, um, we weren't doing too well in terms of coastal management. In fact, there was a lobster collapse in New England and states were blaming each other. So we decided to start working together. So in 1942, we formed the Atlantic State Marine Fisheries Commission and essentially started working together to cooperatively manage fish. And quotes around cooperatively because that's a term of art. Um, and that worked pretty well up until the mid-70s, or early 70s, and we found out that our offshore fisheries were being maybe taken by foreign fleets. So our pond got even bigger. Um, it was now from 12 miles, it was out to 200 miles. So we formed the, uh, the Magnuson-Stevens Act was passed, and we had a series of different councils, and New York part of the Mid-Atlantic Council. Now, there was nine councils set up along the country, and what I want you to pay attention to is on the, on the eastern coast, or the eastern seaboard. Essentially, you've got the Pacific, the Gulf, it's all one council. On the east, you've got New England, Mid-Atlantic, South Atlantic. So you've got fisheries that are being managed by three different councils. A little history on laws. The Magnuson-Stevens Act was passed in 76. It was updated in 86. Then again, in 1993, we had something called that FICMA, which actually gave the Secretary of Commerce the right to close down fisheries if we didn't cooperate. And in 2007 was the last update of the Magnuson-Stevens Act. To note here, it's been 16 years since we've had an update, and a lot of things with particularly species moving under climate change have happened during that period. Uh, a lot of slides you've seen. John Hare from the NOAA Fisheries, the Northeast Science Center pretty much shows that um, global warming is happening, climate change is happening. But one thing that some people don't realize, it's not equal around the world. And if you look at the northeastern United States, it's happening a lot more uh, quickly and more severely than it is in other places, which really gives us some challenges in terms of our management. Uh, some of these graphs you've seen by 20, 99, 2070, our climate's going to be like Georgia or North Florida if all the predictions are shown. So we really got to start worrying about management. And if you don't believe that, watch the fish. Um, I have a lot of uh, political folks in my family that still think climate change isn't happening, but they all fish. And I say, so this is summer flounder. This is what on the left happened back where the stocks were back in the, in the 70s and the 80s and where they are today. But we're still using data from the 1980s to do allocations and management, which makes absolutely no sense. And that's all because this is a federally managed fishery. Uh, and you can go through slides of different species, and they're all doing the same thing. So if you don't believe in climate change, just watch the fish. They're the ones that are telling us what's going on. So we have a whole lot of things happening. We have things like cobia and Spanish mackerel that we never saw very much of that we have management plans for. You've got black sea bass in the Gulf of Maine. They didn't know what they were 15 years ago. Uh, banded rudderfish, I caught one of them last year, and very good to eat. You've got things like winter flounder that are going the way of the buffalo, or they're going offshore because it's too warm. The lobster fishery's gone. So our management is really stale, and our laws really were designed uh, to look at fisheries changing maybe locally, but not in regional or even like an entire seaboard. So the challenges that climate change have brought to us, we've got warming sea temperatures, species abundance distribution shifts, ocean acidification, invasive species. We need spatial planning. The economics are changing. The politics are changing. There's changing laws. We have international and interstate agreements that are very stale. And then we have outdated data. And we can keep going on on this list, but the thing we need to go moving forward is to modernize our management if we're going to be able to do it effectively with all the issues of climate change. Uh, and then on top of that, we've got new things that we didn't have to deal with years ago. Um, renewable energy is big, but we're putting all a lot of stuff in the water. So these are the maps of all the offshore wind development that's going to be going on. 
So now you've got uh, to deal with traditional fisheries management, but a whole lot of new things in the water. We're using old science. This is, we're trying to figure out where to put these things based upon where the fisheries are. But again, if they keep changing, what we do and decide to put them now may be different 10 years from now. So another challenge we have to face. Uh, invasive species are just like everything in freshwater or saltwater. We're getting them all over the place. And every year we get new things that we're finding. <clears throat> we've been building artificial reefs. We've spent $10 million the last couple of years putting more things in the water to make more opportunities, but again, the ocean's getting a little more crowded. Uh, there's aquacultures coming up, so places like the Peconics. This is Suffolk County would love to lease out the entire Peconic system so that we can grow clams, oysters, and even now sugar kelp, which is a new crop coming up. Um, just threw this up for the inland folks, whatever, you have 13 hatcheries, but we're going to be building more of those, and that's one way of doing it is aquaculture, but there's pros and cons of that, and under the new Bond Act, there's going to be another $75 million to expand hatcheries inland. So the ocean's getting a bit crowded. Um, so back when I started, this guy, this is what we pretty much managed offshore, and there was, you know, some interaction, but not as many. Now they have to deal with, can I still fish with offshore wind and energy? Is that going to be done properly? Um, we're looking at aquaculture in the ocean. NOAA Fisheries really wants to do a lot of new, new ideas in terms of aquaculture, growing things in the water. Um, the last administration wanted to do oil drilling, so that's sort of been gone for a little while, but it may come back again. Uh, ranching in the ocean, we have lots of big areas, whatever. They want to start putting pens out there. And of course, we've got our wildlife out there, and the good news is well, those humpback whale populations are coming back, but there's a lot more things they can run into and interact with. Shipping has been increasing dramatically in terms of the number of vessels, but also the size of the vessels. They're dredging all the harbors. <coughs> we've got cruise ships, um, thousand foot long cruise ships, and hundreds of them out there. Uh, then we've got our more traditional thing, party boat fishing, whatever. They're taking up a good part of it. And then our recreational industry, small boats, but we've got crazy boats now that are out there fishing and going further offshore. <clears throat> so anyway, fisheries management going forward, just to sum up, is that we really have new approaches will be needed. Uh, we have ecosystem-based management is really, we've done that with Menhaden, we need to start doing that more and managing species, uh, you know, multi-species plants, not single species we've done in the past. We need more adaptive management. Sometimes things change and we don't have a management plan for two or three years, and it's really too late at that point. Uh, Modeling is going to be very big. Um, we really don't have the data to really plug into what we know in our old management style, so modeling is going to be very, 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 very big. And our international, federal, and state laws need to be revamped. The Steve Magnuson Stevens Act seriously needs to be updated to, to deal with what's going on with climate change, even the New York Conservation Law. We did a report a couple of years ago to try to figure out how to get our fisheries and commercial size, are, they're overcapitalized. We really need to size them appropriately. We need special planning. There's so much going on out in the ocean right now, it isn't funny. And then we need effective invasive species monitoring response. And uh, I could go on and on, but really just wanted to end at this point and say, this is the challenge that's facing you. I just retired. <laughs> I think my job was really easy, but you guys really have a much harder job, but an exciting time. There's so much that's going to be focused on, on our coastal resources and fisheries that it's important for you guys to, you know, the new generation to, to come up with great ideas and be creative and hopefully solve a lot of these challenging problems. So. Thank you and have a have a great meeting.